Howdy partners and welcome to Starhawk. Time for an all new LP. Here's our main man Emmett Graves, quite the badass. And I must say one of my favorite recent video game characters. So without further ado, let's start this story. This, it all started with a spark. A flash of blue gold, rift energy. When the rush kicked off, rifters spread across the spur like wildfire. Planets that once were wastelands now had men, all fighting to stake their claim, looking to strike it rich. But those rifts could just as easily make them monsters. And that's where we make our money. Cutter and I save claims, clean up the jobs others can't. We're rift salvagers. Damn good ones. We've hit every quota. Never back down from a job. This time, maybe we should have. You got a Union Sheriff, don't you, Jonas? We do. But this is beyond his reach. Uh, union boys can't solve an outcast problem. Problem? It's a hell of a lot more than that. It's the outlaw. Scabs have always been just pests. But he's leading them now. Banded them together. And they've put a stranglehold on us. Taken our livelihood. That's why I'm asking. Come on back to White Sands, Emmett. I'll make it worth your while. The moment I stepped foot on that dirt, I remembered why I left. Logan, you got it? It's the one, Emmett. Some things never fade away. They make you who you are. Emmett! Glad to see you. Jonas. You just got here, I know, but there's no rest for the weary. Sheriff Howell is about to ride out, check on a work site. Outcast scabs have been poking around, and we can't lose another. Not before the Union Tug makes it here. We deliver our quota, and that's it. You get your deal, Emmett. Scabs. They're raiding. Cutter, what are we looking at? First thing you'll probably notice is the pretty nice space western setting, and I really, really like it. It's pretty cool. I'm scanning the work site. Specs are lit up. Those filthy scabs are hitting hard and fast. Got it. We're riding in. Stay close. Things ain't like they used to be out here. You just have to keep up. I'll do the rest. Sheriff, I'm patching you into our frequency. Hold tight. Sounds like you got a ship made. Must be nice. Captain of the Annabelle will do just fine. Union Renacop. I'm already starting to hate this sheriff guy. He's a pretty annoying douche. Anyway, let's hop on our awesome jet bike and go. The Rift Boom days are over. There's a hell of a lot less mining sites, and the outlaw took the pit refinery years ago. That's a shame. Looks like your homecoming is a bit too late. Well, better late than never. At least now I'm here to clean up this mess that you're clearly too incapable to handle. So let's do this. Got it. Any word on the tug? Not yet. But I got a lock on a loading area. The pipeline on Scourge. It ain't pretty. It's got the only working orbital lifter in the outer spur. The Union is scheduled to pick up. The only one this year. Jonas is saying they've only mined about half their quota so far. Well then we only have a few days to get the rest. That's what we do. Just do the job, make it quick. So, just to uh, briefly summarize everything that's been going on. Basically, we're in the, the universe somewhere, the galaxy, whatever. There's this energy source, Rift Energy, that's pretty damn valuable, apparently. And everyone's out to mine it, and Rift Energy also mutates people who come into contact with it. And they're kind of like... They kind of turn obsessive over it, they want to get all the Rift energy for themselves. And Emmett and Cutter are basically guns for hire who get rid of the outcast and protect the Rift miners. So, definitely pretty interesting setting. Nice uh, space western thing. Cool guns. Control's pretty damn sweet. Alright, come on you bastard. Nice. And as you can see, clearly a pretty damn big open world. 
Although, I guess it is sort of linear. But it's still pretty damn cool. So, for now, we have a tiny pistol and a kinetic rifle, which is just your standard assault rifle fare. How do I swap weapons? I got this one by pressing left on the D-pad, but how do I get back to the handgun? I want the handgun. No. Okay, this actually took me quite a while to figure out, but... Uh, to get the handgun, you have to press up and right on the D-pad, kind of like go diagonally. It's uh, a little unwieldy, takes a little bit of time to get used to, but you'll figure it out eventually. Anyway, back on the bike and go. Connor, what did they hit? The rig. Lit it up. It's getting hairy down there. Oh shit, time for some action. Oh, crouch. Okay, that's nice. So we can sort of take cover behind walls. This game doesn't have the, uh, like a cover system. Like most third-person shooters, like Gears of War or Uncharted. This game doesn't have that. Then again... It's not really that much of a miss. Because it still works out pretty well. I mean, you can pretty much just crouch behind the walls and then pop out. And it works pretty similar to the cover system. What I do kind of find annoying is that when you're zooming in like this, you can't change the shoulder that you're viewing over. Pretty much always have to shoot like this. And that can kind of get annoying when you're trying to peek around a corner and hit an enemy, because then you basically have to get out of cover completely. That is kind of a pain, but it's no game-breaking issue, I suppose. Also, you regenerate your health over time, like most games these days. So yeah, overall, it's a pretty damn good third-person shooter, in my opinion. It's also got some shares of other genres in it, like... Tower Defense, so that's not really a combination you see with third-person shooters that often. And also, uh, like a flying game, like Star Fox, kinda. Oh, crap. Get him, get him, get him. The uh, Assault Rifle does kind of suck at long range. I'm pretty sure someone else stole my kill there. Come on, you scab bastard. Oh, crap, more are dropping in. And I'm... Kind of starting to run out on, run out of ammo. That's bad. Oh crap! Here's a guy. Oh, three guys. Oh, what? What? The hell just happened? Did I? Did I shoot an exploding barrel or something? I wasn't even anywhere near an exploding barrel. Oh well. All right, I have to try this again. If I could just get the handgun back, because this handgun. Oh, jeez, this handgun is amazing. If there's ever, if say Screw Attack does a top 10 best handguns in video games, then I'm pretty sure that Starhawk's handgun is going to make the list. Because this thing is just wicked strong, it's got great damage, You can it actually has great range as well, it definitely has more range than the freaking assault rifle. It's basically your second best weapon when trying to deal with faraway enemies apart from the sniper rifle which you don't really have all the time i guess well you do kind of have regular access to it further down the line because well i'm not gonna spoil it immediately you'll just have to wait and see until we show off the game's defining feature also let's shank this guy from behind oh so that's i shot those barrels and just there were a couple behind me as well. Those are what probably got me. Alright, I'm learning. Oh, jeez. Dropping in from escape pods from the sky. Pretty damn awesome. Now, if you could just kindly die. Thank you. Go around and collect all the ammo. Couple more around here. Okay, here they come. Line them. Oh, crap. Oh, sure, just walk straight towards me. So I can stab you in your chest and throw you aside. See, Emmett's quite a badass. Stabs you in the chest, just knocks you aside and doesn't give a crap. Oh, okay, that's the last of them. Last of them. Specs are clear. The site is scab free. They sure left their mark, didn't they? Yeah, damn scabs. How's the look? It looks like rubble, Tracy. 
can't save any of them. This puts us days behind. We just built this thing. Watch out! Get back! Whoa! Man, that was close. Oh, holy crap, what was that about? Cutter, let's get a rig on that rift before somebody else gets killed. Jeez, this is not safe at all. Rig is ready. Call it down. It'll bust right through that old structure. Now, are you ready to see the build and battle system? Let's drop down one of these things. This is what makes this game's multiplayer so damn unique. What kind of contraption is this? That thing is unique. Ready up the arsenal. All right, but you're low on energy. I've got rift barrels heading to you. Charge up. Yep, you shoot those barrels to regain energy with which you can call down all sorts of buildings. It's awesome. Sure you can handle this job? I'll be just fine, Chef. That'll do it. I got a supply bunker standing by, ready to call down. A bunker? That's it? I'm prepping as fast as Annabelle lets me, mate. She's only one ship. All right, I'll take what I can get. So, time to call in the first useful building, because the Rift Extractor is not really a building that's going to help you in any sort of ways, just for the sake of the story, mostly. Here's a bunker. This thing is chock full of awesome weaponry. I'm hearing on the Union signal everybody in White Sand seems to know you're back. Word travels fast around here. How about Tilly? Is he hurt? Not yet. How are we looking? Sidewinder's coming in. Your rocket launcher is good to go. Line them up. That's what the supply bunker gives you. A rocket launcher and a shotgun. So, none of that carry only two guns at a time bullcrap. This game goes old school. Carry as many weapons as you want. Then again, there aren't that many weapons to choose from. I, the slots would suggest that there's like eight weapons, but really, I've only actually seen, I think, five or six of them. We have the four we have now, pistol, rifle, shotgun, and rocket launcher. And the sniper rifle, I think, and that's all I've ever used. I might have missed a couple though, or maybe there's a couple that just aren't in single player. So that might be a possible explanation. I haven't played the multiplayer of this because I bought a used copy. This is one of those games that has an online pass, so to play multiplayer I'd have to buy an online pass. I don't really have the time to play a whole lot of multiplayer, so when I have the time I usually just play single player games and record future LPs. So yeah, the multiplayer is still probably pretty damn awesome though. Look alive, we got scrappers. Scrappers, I hate scrappers. Cutter, let's keep them out. Ready up the walls. I got plenty in the hopper. Link the walls up. I'll keep them coming. Yep, you can pretty much change the face of the map by placing walls anywhere you want to. It's great. You see in this hardware? These boys are working with antiques. And it's all union made. Man alive. What kind of horrible hell is this place? It's definitely a hellhole, just like the Wild West of good old days. Walls are ready to upgrade into gates. Use the control panels on the back. So what you could do in multiplayer is just build a gigantic base with all sorts of buildings, build walls around it, put a gate in the wall so you can go through, and there's the scrappers. Not really the most scary enemy type, because they don't have any guns, they just rush at you with their claws and try to kill you that way. And let's turn this into a gate. Also, you can totally kill people by dropping buildings on them. It's kind of difficult to do that because the buildings usually take a couple seconds to drop down all the way and people will probably like see the shadow that's cast and just get the hell away from there but it's definitely possible you can even get a trophy for doing so and i'm pretty sure i drop a building on someone somewhere in this lp so there's definitely that to look forward to and for some reason they're just rushing at the wall well cutter did say that they were pretty freaking stupid Pissed off him coming in fast. You 
got a pod storm heading in over at the walls. Great, more escape pods dropping in with people with guns. I hear you, Cutter. I'm gonna need some firepower. Ready up the auto turrets. Turrets are standing by. Shock at them or spread them out. They're ready to call down. Yep, you could even fortify your base with auto turrets. And they're pretty cheap, you can put down a lot of those. And I must say they are kind of cheap in a sense. Because, well, pretty much the majority of the game plays out like this. You get an indication of what enemy is gonna show up where to essentially give you time to build a base and fortify your position. And what I usually do is I just dump auto turrets all over the place so they get caught in the crossfire and just drop like flies. It's a pretty effective strategy. But damn, look at all those shadows. This is gonna get hairy. But luckily, oh crap, I could have placed those better. I'm pretty sure one is kind of blocking the other. So see, you really do kind of need to play this game in a smart way, or you're kind of going to screw yourself over with that. Also, in the multiplayer, the base building, I guess it it doesn't really work well if you don't cooperate with your teammates. So in multiplayer, communication and cooperation is key. Then again, isn't communication and cooperation key in everything in life? And why am I planning a philosophical discussion on a video about Starhawk? No idea. But yeah, the turrets pretty much chewed up all the... Oh, there's still one over there. Who's kind of out of range, but he's dead now. Alright. Excited yet? That looks like the last of them, Cutter. There's not a scab in sight. That's how you earn a paycheck. Had it. The Rifters rebuild this worksite, and it never fails. The next day, those scabs tear it all down. That often? It's more than a scab problem. We got new neighbors. Cutter, scan the ridge line. Tell me what you see. Got something, Emmett. An abandoned fuel depot just above you. It's crawling with outcasts. No way. This is my territory. If there's a horde of them up there, I would know about it. Cutter says they're up there. That's where they are. You're not on my dime. Do what you want. I'm staying right here. Okay. Ready up a jet bike corral. I'm heading up. Yep, you can drop down vehicle garages as well. Just summon vehicles wherever you go. It's great. And you know what? You haven't even seen a fraction of what this game's all about. So, more will be shown in the future episodes of Starhawk. And really, it's such an underrated gem, in my opinion. It's just spectacular. I would suggest everyone to buy this game and just play it because it's fantastic. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.